I want those emails out. Nobody has uh, a bigger interest in getting them released than I do. I respect the State Department. They have their process that they do for everybody, not just for me. But anything that they might do to expedite that process, I heartily support. You know, I want the American people to learn as much as uh, we can about the work that I did with our diplomats and our development experts. All right, here comes some truth. Despite what some people might be screaming and carrying on about, the Republican Party is not on the verge of turning into a withered old husk and blowing away in the political breeze. Then again, it is more often than not still considered the party of get off my lawn. And perhaps not even the Rubios, Pauls, Jindals, and others of the era will save them from being buried in 2016. Up oh, then again, it's not as if the Democrats are any better at turning out a clear message. Turn to the political animal. Welcome in veteran economist, syndicated columnist, University of Maryland business professor Peter Marisi, along with former spokesperson for President George W. Bush and now senior project manager for Hathaway Strategies, Pete Seat. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Nice to be with Thank you. Thank you. Pete Seat, let's go ahead and start with you on this one. Certainly, Hillary Clinton says, let's get those State Department emails out there. But, gee, what about the New York Times report that said you had a second email that you didn't bother to tell us about? How interesting. Yeah, how interesting and unsurprising that the Clintons have potentially not been upfront about something in their past. What I found most startling about her response, which, mind you, was the first time in 28 days that she has taken questions from the media, which is a clear sign that she's trying to hide something and trying to evade questions. But the fact that she has said no one has a bigger interest than me in having these emails released. And I disagree with Secretary Clinton. There are 300 million people that have a bigger interest, and that's the American people. We deserve to know what's in there, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is government property. This is property of the public. And we should know what's in there related to Benghazi, related to the Clinton Foundation, okay. and other okay. issues that she addressed while Secretary of State. Let's get to this, Peter Marisi, then, because it's worth pointing out that, yes, that's what Mrs. Clinton said. But then how much should we take into account that there is still that second email account Account. She's not addressing that. Are they just doing, and does she still continue to do a marvelous job of using the media? Well, she certainly does a great job of using the media. The media wants her elected, and she's behaving much like Thomas Dewey, uh, you know, uh, did, did, did against Truman, in that it seems to be her election to lose. The Republicans don't seem to have a candidate that polls well against her. She's ignited a lot of excitement among women who, no matter what we find out about her behavior, their view is the men have done worse, and so they're going to vote for her. And so she'd like to just play out the clock. 28 days, she had to speak today, so she did. A second email address. The Clintons have more secrets from Americans than, than, than you can possibly believe, and they want to keep them that way. And I think perhaps when you say that the media wants her elected, there certainly is still always, no matter how you try to get away from it, though, Peter, there is always the evidence there. Because quite frankly, there are only a certain part of the media that seems to hammer away at the fact that she's hiding. She continues to hide and nobody wants to press her. It's almost as if it's hands off. Isn't that what the media is supposed to do? Put the hands on and actually start to question somebody? Well, look what Fox is doing to the Republican candidates after Jeb Bush's comments. They're going after them. Uh, you know, they're trying to get them to, to state their positions. Uh, the New York Times, uh, NBC News, they're not going to do that. They're there to boost and to promote Hillary Clinton. It's, it's that simple. Uh, we really do have a complaint on the right that we don't get a fair shake. Come on, guys. Let's go ahead and grow a few here. Let's see if we can get this done and, and actually ask some questions here. Pete C., let's come to you and what I led with here. Article that came out in Politico said the GOP is dying off literally. They did the math here, and they were actually looking at the fact that, according to them, the GOP is getting so old, they may just wither away and, and dry. Listen, they're not going to go away, but doesn't the GOP need to start taking this seriously, that it is considered the party of old white guys, and they've got to change that sooner or later. They've got to get younger and find a way to appeal to the young voters. I would phrase this a little differently. Political par participation is dying off. And when you look at the younger generation, millennials, they're not uh, ascribing to a particular political party. And that's a challenge for both Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, but which come on, is Pete, isn't that a convenient that excuse? Hang on, Pete, isn't that just a convenient excuse? Yeah, okay, but let's get down to the meat of the matter here. The youth of today, the millennials and the younger generation, doesn't, isn't they're not interested in the Republicans on the whole. 
And they're not interested in Democrats either. But I, I will get to your point, which is, yes, it's a bigger problem for the Republican Party. The Republican Party needs to do a better job reaching out to young people. We're going to have between 8 and 13 million new voters come 2016 that are going to be seeking a candidate and a party to vote for in that election. And so Republicans are going to have to start talking to them, going to college campuses, coming up with issues, predominantly fiscal issues, that resonate better with young people to get them into the Republican fold. But this is a demographic challenge all around with primetime television, radio, you name it. Everyone's struggling with aging baby boomers and how to okay. get the younger generation involved. That's agreed. Only got 40 seconds left. Peter Maurice, to you then. Then how do the Republicans do that until they maybe have to face winding up withering away? What do they need to do? First thing out of the box to get to these younger voters. Well, they do need to have a better ground game, and they need to not just reach out to young voters, but to reach out to young Hispanics, because that's where a lot of the young people are, and to start addressing issues that really relate to them, things like jobs and so forth. Uh, the Republicans just don't do a particularly good job of that. The other thing is there are a lot of things that are going on in, in American capitalism that should appall conservatives and appall Republicans. For example, the abuse of monopolies, such as the cable companies or the large banks. But we don't see the Republicans railing out against that and offering market solutions yep. to have co competitive discipline quite the way we see the Democrats talking about regulatory discipline. Get in there and go and after them. You are exactly right. Gentlemen, we're out of time. Thanks so much. Peter Marisi, Pete Seat, we thank you so much for your time. We'll look forward to talking to you again. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news, the hard line continues.